I'm Jason Jorgensen. Glad you could join us for another edition of Husker Chat. It's brought to you by Acres Equipment. We once again are joined by Sean Callahan, the publisher of Husker Online, as we take a look back at Nebraska's a strong performance against Oklahoma and this week's road game at Michigan State. Well, Sean, they, they made a game of it. Uh, Nebraska gave themselves a chance in that game against a highly ranked Oklahoma squad last week. You were there in Norman. Uh, what did you come away with from that performance? Well, I think I come away from it that Nebraska physically has the talent to match up with just about anybody they play because they showed that on Saturday. Um, you know, there's still some issues with this team on the offensive line and special teams. They have a, a good defense that doesn't allow very many big plays. Oklahoma's long play on Saturday was just 23 yards. They had just two plays longer than 20. So I, I think they really made the Sooners earn what they get. And that made the score what it was. I mean, o Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley had always scored over 27 points every game until Nebraska. And then I thought the offense, Jason, getting Omar Manning and Xavier Betts together with Travis Volkel like an Austin Allen at tight end, it really changed the look of what Nebraska was able to do as far as stretching the field in the passing game. We'd spoken last week. We each thought Oklahoma would win that game. Were you surprised that they never really were able to pull away from Nebraska and that Scott Frost and the Huskers found a way to stay in it? I mean, yes and no, but Nebraska's physicality was giving Oklahoma a lot of problems. And I had some writers from Oklahoma come up and say, like, Nebraska's defense, the way they play up front, they, go, they look like a bunch of lumberjacks. I mean, they were just – um, you know, causing fits for Oklahoma and, and what they wanted to do. They were disrupting Spencer Rattler enough. Then Adrian Martinez had, you know, his deep ball working and Nebraska kind of came at him with a big 10 personality. Uh, they came out with four tight ends on some sets. So I think I credit Nebraska. They had the offense and the defense ready for the most part in this game. Uh, but when you miss two field goals, have an extra point blocked and return for two points and you lose by seven, that's all you need to know right there. I mean, Nebraska – um, you know, put enough points up on the board to have a chance to win on Saturday. What about special teams? It would be nice some week not to mention it. Uh, I know Scott Frost is tired of hearing the questions about it, but those questions will be – people are going to continue to ask those as long as Nebraska continues to come up with new ways to, to mess up in special teams. Yeah, it, it's unfortunate uh, because Nebraska did enough to, to, to get it done. And um, – you know, th this week it's been Connor Culp. And I think of all the questions, he was kind of the guy you had the least worries about. He was the Big Ten kicker of the year. But I, I think he battles some kind of injury that slowed him down. And it's, it's kind of like a golfer. If one little small thing is off for a kicker, that's all it takes. And, you know, something's been off with his stroke. And that's been a big deal because the margin for error over the next eight games, those three points could be the difference. They have some other options. How close do you think they are to pulling him? I know they sent, uh, you know, they sent a freshman walk on out there to try the extra point. It was blocked. That wasn't his fault. But uh, do you think they they they're running out? Their patience for Culp is running thin. Come on, know your walk ons, Jason. Kellen Meyer <laughs> from uh, Ord, Nebraska. Um, yeah, he he was a um, really good high school kicker, one of the better ones to come out of the state in recent years. He got to come in for that extra point, and the play was blown up in the middle. Um, and you know, it wasn't even his fault, but yeah, I, I, I think they're hoping that to ride things out with Connor Culp. I know during practice, he doesn't miss, um, but a game is a whole different story. All right. How about this week on the road at Michigan state? I think the Spartans are one of the real surprises in the first month of the season. Mel Tucker, he decided to go heavy. He went swimming in the transfer portal uh, in the off season. And so far it's worked for Michigan state. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of people were skeptical of the approach he was taking. Can you really do this in the Big Ten and blend a roster together in one year? And he's proven he can do it. He has the ability to make it work. Kenneth Walker was a transfer from Wake Forest, and he leads the nation in rushing. So um, you talk about coaches that have maximized the transfer portal at the Power Five level. Right now you have to look at Michigan State as someone that has figured out a way to do it. It's probably not the long-term formula they want to go with, um, but he's he's done a great job, and they know what their identity is. They are a blue collar. He said it at Big Ten Media Days. We're a meat and potato type of team. How do you see this matchup uh, for Nebraska going there to East Lansing and taking on Spartan teams? One one thing is for sure, with their victory against Northwestern, and granted the Wildcats have struggled, but 
they've got to be oozing confidence right now going down to South Florida last week and spanking Miami. Yeah, Miami got destroyed by Alabama and almost got beat by Appalachian State. So that was a program kind of on thin ice. And then Michigan State just punched them in the face, right, when they got down there. And I think for Nebraska, it's all about withstanding the early charge in the game. It's going to be a night game. It's going to be hostile. Mel Tucker is going to have these guys come out with a big surge. Nebraska needs to kind of withstand that surge, stand up to it. I think they can win this game. I really believe it's a good matchup for Nebraska. Um, I, I think when you match up talent, Nebraska has better talent than Michigan State. Uh, I think Nebraska's defense is built to stop a physical run game. So there's a lot I like about this game for Nebraska going into Saturday. Seems to me, though, we've been here before in this Scott Frost era where we'll see Nebraska show up and play pretty well and do some things like they did to Oklahoma. And we think, okay, they're close. They're heading in the right direction. Then the next game, uh, they lay an egg. I, I would assume if, if they can copy that performance down in Norman, uh, that's what they need this week. Yeah, and, and the difference from like last year, you're, you're referring to Minnesota and Illinois. Nebraska was a 14 to 17 point favorite in those two games. So I think there was almost a mentality they could just show up and win. This game, Nebraska is a five point dog, open as a three. I think they know like they're the underdog again this week, where I think this team last year had a hard time playing the role of favorite. And I felt like they let their foot off the gas. That's not going to be the case going into East Lansing. All right. Hopefully it all comes together and Nebraska can get it done against the Spartans. Sean, as always, thanks a lot for the time. Thanks, Jason. All right. Thanks a lot, Sean. And once again, that's Sean Callahan, the publisher of Husker Online, joining us for Husker Chat. We are here every week. It's brought to you by Acres Equipment. I'm Jason Jorgensen.